Welcome. In this video, I'm going to talk about using the discriminant to determine the number of solutions in a quadratic equation. Now, before we even get rolling anywhere else, we'll talk about quadratic equations for a second. You're really dealing with something with an x squared in it as the highest order term. We'll call the number that's in front of the coefficient a, that's just how we'll refer to it. Anything in front of the linear term, or the x term, we'll call b, and anything by itself we'll refer to as c just for later reference. Now, graphically speaking, quadratic equations usually have that parabola feel to them. Something that looks like this. And my solutions would be right here on the x-axis. So I would say that, uh, yeah, on the x-axis. I almost lost my mind there for a second. So I would say that there, there, because it crosses twice, there are two real solutions. Now, what if that graph looked a different way? There are other ways for it to look. There is a possibility that will graph will only hit one time. It only strikes right there at the vertex. So I would say that this one has one real solution. And, you know, from there, I could also have this one, and hopefully this will show up in the gray over here. This one does not hit the axis at all, so it technically doesn't have any real solutions. But what you'll end up with when you try to solve it through quadratic equation or whatever are imaginary numbers. So I would say that it has two, or complex numbers as it were, I will say that it has two imaginary solutions. I didn't realize I was going to overlap so much. So I could have two real solutions, one real solution, or two imaginary solutions. Now, what the heck does that have to do with the discriminant, and what's the discriminant anyway? Well, the discriminant is based off of the idea of the quadratic equation, or the quadratic formula, I'm sorry. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. The discriminant is this part right here the part that's underneath the square root. Why is that such an important idea as far as the quadratic formula is concerned? Well, if you think about it, if it is zero, so say the discriminant value is zero here, then that means it's negative b plus or minus nothing over 2a, which means you won't have two solutions because there's nothing to plus or minus. You just end up with negative b plus or minus nothing over 2a. So really you end up with negative b over 2a and no matter how you slice it that's going to give you one solution. So this would be this situation. So if the discriminant is 0. So actually I'm just going to write discrim equals zero. That's what happens. If it is positive, which like a, you know some of the normal ones that you do, then you end up with this. So if the discriminant is positive, then you end up with two real solutions. Because it'll work out where you'll have negative b plus or minus a square root that won't give you an imaginary number. So you'll have negative b plus something, negative b minus something, two solutions that are real. The other side of it is if the discriminant is equal to a negative, so I'm going to rewrite this as positive, if that discriminative, uh, discriminant, sheesh, if the discriminant is negative, I end up with imaginary numbers because I'll end up with a negative under the square root. So the discriminant can tell me a lot about what my problem is going to look like. If I just want to take a second to do it very quickly, I can see, well, I don't ha I'm going to have imaginary numbers, so I know I'm in for a long day using the old quadratic equation. So let's take a look at some of them. First off, I don't know why that opened up. I think it was trying to 
linked to some random thing. Who knows? Anyway, um, from here, negative uh, 2x squared plus 4x minus 2. So I'm going to go ahead and do what I did before and uh, on the quadratic formula video and identify everything I, I'll need on this problem. So the first thing that I'll need is to know that a is equal to negative 2, b is equal to 4, and c is equal to negative 2. The nice thing is much easier than quadratic equation questions because all I have to do is write down and then solve for answers. Now for b squared, of course, it's 16. I always treat the negative on the 4 here, at, or the minus 4 as negative 4, so then I could do negative 4 times negative 2 times negative 2, and uh, 4 times 2 being 8, and 8 times 2 being 16, that would give me negative 16, because it's a rare situation where you have three negatives. 16 minus 16 is 0, which means I wouldn't have anything to in, in the quadratic equation to add or subtract from the negative b, so I'll end up with 1 real solution. Here's my discriminant right there, zero. Check my answers, zero, one real solution. That's all I can have. So let's look at another one. In this case, I've got to make one minor adjustment first, just like in the quadratic equation. I need to make sure that all of the terms other than zero are on the are one side of the equation or the other. So I'm really working with 4n squared plus 2n plus 8. So a is 4, b is 2, and c is 8. So let's go ahead and do the discriminant here so we can get a feel for how things are going. So b squared minus 4ac. So I'm doing 2 squared I don't know why I put an equal sign there. Remember, if you have a negative and you're having to square it, make sure you put it in parentheses. This and this don't apply in this problem, but they might in the future, uh, are different things. This one says negative 2 times negative 2. Now I'll give you 4. That's the one you want. This one says square 2 first and then add a negative, so it's negative 4. So they're not the same thing. So just be careful. I say that a lot in videos, but it's one of the things that people miss a lot, so I feel like it needs to be covered. Now, 4 times A here would be 4 times c here would be 8. So I'm dealing with uh, 2 squared is 4, and then 4 times 4 is 16, and then 16 times 8 is 128. So I have 4 minus 128, and I get negative 124. There's my discriminant. It is negative, which means the graph itself does not touch the uh, y-axis, so I have two solutions, but they are imaginary. Two imaginary solutions with negative 124. And remember, that's because when you do it in the quadratic formula, or you can test it in the quadratic formula. When you had it, you'd be doing negative b plus or minus a negative square root, which means you have i in it. Just point of reference there. For this one, it looks like, what are you supposed to do with this? Well, you're supposed to treat it the same way you did everything else. Just move the 7a over to the other side here. You'll end up with 3a squared plus 7a plus 0 if you want, equals 0. So that means my a term is 3, my b term is 7, and my c term is 0. It's supposed to be a 0. So I'm ready to look at my discriminant now. b squared minus 4ac. b squared here would be 7 squared. Minus 4 times 3 times 0, which makes the end part moot, which is kind of nice. So I end up with 49. Since I have a positive number, that means that I could have plus or minus that. So I do have real solutions, and I have two real solutions.
I think there's one more. Another one of these wild ones that look crazy. In this sense, I don't really want to move all the stuff on the right over to the left side of the equation. So instead of doing that, I'm just going to move stuff over from the left to the right. So minus 9v squared. Those cancel, I get my 0 over here that I've been looking for. And then I'm going to rewrite, actually I'll write it down normal, and then I'll reorganize it into ordering my terms. So 0 equals negative 6v squared. As long as you keep the sign on it, you can move it however you want. Negative 3v minus 4. So that means a is equal to negative 6, b is equal to negative 3, and c is equal to negative 4. Finally, one with a negative b, that's what I'm trying to, it would prove my point about making the square root thing, or making the square, sorry, b squared minus 4 a c. So b squared here, negative 3 squared. Don't put negative 3 squared. Put negative 3 in parentheses, otherwise it'll be wrong. Minus 4 times negative 6 times negative 4. So this is just 9. And then negative 4 times negative 6 times negative 4, because I treat this as a negative when I'm multiplying it. There's three negatives there, so I end up with negative 96. So my discriminant, 9 minus 96, is negative 87. And because it is negative, I say I have two imaginary solutions. So the benefit to doing the discriminant is you could do it quickly, like on the side or just in your calculator or whatever, to give you a feel of the overall look of your final answer. That way, if your discriminant says you're supposed to have imaginary numbers, and then you go through solving the quadratic equation and find out that, uh, yeah, whoops, I don't have imaginary numbers. You know something on one side or the other has gone wrong. Also, you could graph them and just look at where the graph is located, and hopefully that will get you to where you need to be. So um, I hope this helps.